record this. Okay, so let's continue. We have now the following sections in the laboratory. So this is still pertaining to the manufacturing laboratories that we have. Now, we have the first section, materials inspection section. So in this case, they will be um, receiving the raw materials from the different suppliers that they have pwedeng international, pwedeng local. Now, if they if they receive it, after that, i-examine nila yung raw materials, whether nakapasa sa standards and specifications. And at the same time, aside from the raw materials, they will also, they are also responsible in conducting physical testing for our packaging materials. So, hindi lang doon sa mga chemicals natin, doon din sa ating mga packaging materials, whether sa cartoon man na siya or sa mga bottles or vials or mga blister packages, they do the physical testing. So they also have their own standards and specifications and they may use the USPNF or the British Pharmacopeia as reference. Now the second um, area in the Manufacturing laboratory is our analytical laboratory. So in here, they do or they perform the physical and chemical analysis. So again, they uh, QC section pa rin ito kasi dito nagkakandak yung mga investigations or mga testings. Pero physical and chemical testings only. Physical and chemical characteristics. Yung mga... Ano, biological testing, dito sila sa biological testing laboratory, nakahiwalay ito. Pwedeng, pwedeng isang area in a certain manufacturing firm but meron lang division. Um, dito pinaperform yung mga microbio na testing, even yung pharmacological testing like when they conduct animal testing to their drugs, yung mga sterility testing and toxicity testing nila, dito yan siya kinakandak lahat sa biological testing laboratory. And they are also responsible in conducting environmental monitoring. Okay? Um, any question so far? Again, ano yan siya ha? Um, wait lang. Sections in the laboratory. Questions? Wale? Wale? Sure na? Okay. Kung wala, let's move on. Um, for those companies that manufacture pharmaceutical, I'm sorry, pa parenteral pharmaceutical products, ma'am, ano gani ang B? Ano say B? <laughs> analytical. Ah, analytical laboratory. They, they perform the physical and chemical analysis. When you say physical analysis, like they they perform um, specific gravity testing, yung pag-test sa density, boiling point, melting point, yun yung mga physical testing. Yung mga chemical testing, pwede sa concentration, uh, pwede sila mag-conduct ng... Um, analysis sa purity ng sample as long as they are using chemical substances in the testing, chemical analysis, yun siya. So, more on the chemistry side here na physical and chemical. Dito yung sa biological. Okay? Pero isang, actually isang area lang talaga yan sila sa manufacturing firm. Uh, may mga divisions lang. Okay, sige. Okay, let's continue now for the manufacturing firms um, na, nag, na merong parenterals. So merong isa na nasa heart ng Manila talaga. Um, the, their manufacturing firm is malapit sa, anong school nga yun? Emilio Aguinaldo and sa Adamson, Adamson University. Nagi just sa heart sa city ang manufacturing firm. Marami silang parenterals na na products, especially yung mga antibiotics. So, nagde-deploy din tayo ng students doon. Um, ito yung company na nagre-require ng uh, anong tawag dyan? Yung penicillin na skin test 
sila sila na ang nag-require. So dili tanang company nag-require ana sila lang kasi nag-manufacture sila og mga antibiotics like like penicillin and kung ma-expose ka ang allergic ka so pwedeng magkaroon og allergic reaction. So naa sila ginatawag og class 100. It's a clean room. Again, ang tawag sa kanya class 100 kasi ang inaalaw lang na uh, particulate matters na makapasok inside the room is 100 particles per cubic foot. So, or cubic feet, sorry. So, kana lang. Pag class, class 100, 100 part, uh, particles per cubic feet siya. So, ano siya? Again, ang tawag natin, natin clean rooms or airborne particular cleanliness classes in clean rooms and clean zones. Ito yung minimentain in a manufacturing firm with uh, parenteral products. So remember, when you say parenteral products, they are injected directly. Example, sa, uh, sa vein, diretso siya sa blood. And thus, we need to keep our products sterile. Wala dapat other na contamination. So meron yan silang HEPA filter uh, hindi nyo kasi siya ma-picture out pag hindi nyo siya makita. But pagpapasok kayo, class, may HEPA filter. Uh, meron munang maliit na room. Before ka talaga makapasok inside, may maliit na room muna na malakas, medyo malakas yung hangin. Tapos, mura ka niya o glimpyuhan. So, tanggalon ang mga ang mga unsa-unsang mga particles sa imuha para dili ni mo siya madala inside. Okay? Pero again, para hindi na hindi mo siya madala inside. So para kung may makapasok man, nire-regulate lang siya again for 100 particles sa isang cubic na ano. Okay? And then, um, letter D, we also have analytical development research, uh, analytical development or research and development. Ito yung tinatawag nilang R&D section in the manufacturing Firm. So, pwede din ma-assign ang pharmacist here, pero this is more on research sa product development or sa pag-develop ng new procedures to follow or new um, methods for the assay of the product. Or kung merong dapat i-improve sa product nila, sa final product, yun, ang R&D division ang magkakandak ng research. So, merong mga manufacturing firm that will also deploy interns here. Kaya lang wala kayong masyadong gagawin. Paperwork siya. More on paperwork pag R&D section. And then we also have quality coordination office. Paperwork din ito sa part ng manufacturing firm kasi sila yung magme-maintain ng records and if ever merong mga complaints regarding their product, sila yung magkakandak ng investigation and mag-maintain and develop the standard operating procedure. So lima lang itong ano, class, sections in the laboratory, ang paperwork talaga dito sa R&D and sa quality coordination office. So most likely QA ito, quality assurance, itong part na ito or itong section na ito sa laboratory. Okay, the first three QC kasi more on testings sila. Okay, questions before tayo mag-move on sa control functions? Wala? Okay, so for the control functions, what are the functions of our quality control um, area in the manufacturing firm? Number one, analysis function. Um, they ensure that the products meet the standards and specifications and thus pag na-meet yun, syempre acceptable siya to be marketed. That's, an, that's the first one. And then number two, monitoring function. So that this is where they do the in-process testing. But the goal is still to make the product good na quality para masatisfy ang needs ng ating customer, whether it is implied or stated. So uh, during the testing, anything na hindi nakapasa sa standards and specifications will be reported 
Okay? And also, aside from uh, monitoring the quality of the product, the QC area or the QC management um, also do the environmental monitoring. So if you are, uh, if you have observed most of our drugs na nakalabel, um, store away from sunlight and yung temperature, di ba nakalagay, do not uh, exceed 30 degrees Celsius. Kasi yun talaga yung um, ikakasira ng product kapag ka masyado na siyang mainit. Therefore, if you are, if you will have your manufacturing internship plus puhon, you will really experience na inside the manufacturing laboratory, mura na dito nag ice ice sa katugnaw. <laughs> Tugnaw kayo na dito na yan. Ingun ko kagaina, di ba, na you are not allowed to wear your jacket. You are just allowed to wear your uniform and also your lab gown. Okay? Lab gown lang yun siya. Maulang yun na yung pangsagang sa sa init niya dili pa jud mo basta-basta magawas kay kada magawas sulod mo magilis man mo kasi again di ba pag magsige magug kagawas sulod magdala ka og mga particulate matters gikan sa gawas so niya nagakandak sila og environmental monitoring from time to time gina-check nila ang temperature inside the manufacturing firm to ensure na walang product na masisira okay not just with the temperature they also uh, monitor the humidity. Uh, when you say humidity, it's the amount of moisture sa air. Yung Philippines, ang Philippines kasi class na under tayo sa zone 4 ng yung sa climate. Ano kasi tayo dito? Um, hot and humid. Mano siya ang description sa ato uh, sa Philippines. Meaning mainit, pero humid meaning merong moisture ang air natin and this this too is ano really environmental conditions na hindi suitable sa mga drug products pag maraming moisture ang air maraming water it means prone siya sa microbial contamination kung masyadong mainit naman syempre masira din yung ating drug products so yun yung binabantayan. Ang problema mang good sa manufacturing firm, tugnaw ka, ayun no. Tapos after sa manufacturing, i-distribute na siya. Na yung mga wholesalers, distributors, and then sa mga pharmacy. Ang problema kapag ka sa distributor or sa mga pharmacy mismo, hindi sila nag-check ng environmental condition, o na siya ang problema. Pwedeng ikasira sa sa drug. So basig niya yeah, basig nalibog mo na okay man unta ang appearance sa drug pero basig naging subpotent na siya, naging ineffective na siya. So it might be na destroy na siya. Yung iba kasi makikita mo talaga yung degradation physically. So sa una nag-work ko sa Rose Pharmacy sa May Robinsons, bugnaw na gani kay na siya sa sulod sa ano no sa mall. Pero may mga products pa rin nasisira. So, usahay ang kapsul, mag-moist. Okay? So, again, problem yan siya sa environmental um, condition. So, inside sa laboratory, they are very strict with that. Hindi lang siya nagiging strict pag lumabas na siya sa company. Now, aside from that, the QC area also do the recording, reviewing, and releasing function. So, meron silang batch record. Kaya kung titingnan ninyo class yung mga gamot, meron nakalagay na batch number or, or yung iba merong lot number. So, proper recording yan siya by batch. By batch sila. When you say by batch, it doesn't mean na isang araw sila ginawa, isang batch. No. Depende yon siya sa cycle ng manufacturing. So for example, tall manufacturing and then yung drug trader nag-order ng 1 million na capsule. Kung ilang araw nila ginawa ang 1 million, isang batch yon. So hindi siya per day. Okay? I hope that is clear. Pero isang recording yon for the whole batch. Okay? And then they also do audit function. They monitor everything from receiving the raw materials up to the release of this uh, finished products. Okay? Questions? Ang tanad dito ko ba kay Basig? Nagsigira kong istorya dire. Nga waday tanag kasi nabo.
<laughs> as a the pet ulin pero audit ang the pet <laughs> Number three, number three, record review and release function lang siya. So everything should be recorded, mga God, from the time the raw materials are ano, rece uh, were received and then lahat ng results ng testing, kung nakapasa ba or wala. Tapos kung nakapasa, go na no. And then mag maghimo na sila, manufacture na sila ng product. So lahat ng steps na in-undertake sa pag-manufacture, properly recorded yan siya. Okay? Pero by batch. Again, by batch sila i-record. Ire um, again, ang sabi ko kanina, yung batch is hindi per day. It's per manufacturing cycle. So, yung example ko, pag ang um, pag all manufacturing like sa Northfield, kung nag-order yung example MX3 ng isang million na capsule, gagawin nila yon isang cycle. Pero um, hindi kasi guarantee na isang araw lang matatapos nilang isang milyon na capsule. So kung kailan nila matapos yung isang milyon na order, yun yung isang batch. So properly recorded lahat ng nangyari during the manufacturing of that batch. And then even yung pag-release, ipa-properly record nila yan. So kung may review na kailangan, madaling hanapin lang. Madaling gawin. Okay? And then, sa audit function, monitoring pa rin ito. Kasama na yung mga equipment, tableting machines, and so on. Mga distribution testers. Okay? I hope that is clear. Now, in the manufacturing firm, di ba nagtetest sila whether their product, whether it is raw material, the in-process or finished product, kinitest nila if pumasok ba sa standards and specifications. Pero it doesn't mean na lahat yun test. So just like sa research ninyo class, we, all, uh, we only do sampling in the manufacturing firm. Kung 1 million ang isa ka batch, syempre kung isubject ni mo ang isa ka million sa testing, wala na yung mabilin <laughs> kung sa pa ang imuhang igawa sa market. So again, magsa-sampling lang tayo. Meaning we will just get representative samples from that population. So isa-sample sila from different batches. When I was assigned in the QC area during my manufacturing internship, um, ano, nagpapadala lang, the production area will just um, send samples sa QC area. So, sila doon yung namimili. So, pag natapos, example kung in process, no, nabuo na yung tablet, before nila i-packaging, kukuha muna sila ng samples and then ipapadala nila sa QC area for testing kung nakapasa ba before ang packaging ha kasi basig masayang ang ilahang packaging unya wala di ay nakapasa ang mga tablets sa standards and specification so again when you say sample these are the representative taken out from the population so minsan um do, if i if i remember it correctly minsan may dadating na 20 tablets or 20 capsules and then, maya-maya, may dadating na naman na 10 tablets, ganun, for another testing. So, ginagawa nila yan, very strict sila with the testing to really ensure the good quality yung mga products. Now, inspection methods, pwedeng single sampling, double sampling, or triple sampling. From the name itself, when you say single sampling, a decision will be made after one sampling only. Meaning, example, nagpadala sila ng 10 tablets and then sinabject natin siya for um, content uniformity testing after ng procedure. Wait lang. Kaya your internet connection is stable. Meaning, ano, mag-chopping sa ko. Okay. Again, um, after nila gawin yung procedure, pagkita nila, pag meron ng result, mag- gagawa na agad ng decision whether to accept or to reject 
the product. That's single sampling. Pero minsan may mga companies na they do double sampling or triple sampling. Um, kukuha na naman sila ng another sample is a subject sa the same procedure before sila mag-conclude whether to accept or to reject the batch or, or the lot. Depende kung ano yung pinapa-test. Okay? Next. So we have here the sampling plan. We consider the law, um, the loss or probability. We we will use a certain formula later. But the formula, capital letter N is the number of items in a batch or lot, meaning that's the population. And then the small letter N will be the sample size. And then C is the acceptance number or maximum number of defectives allowed. Pero Uh, yung C, hindi pa siya masyadong ginagamit here sa square root system. So yung N here, again, is the sample size. And then square root siya ni N plus 1. The capital letter N is the population. And then the acceptance number is specified by uh, AQL. This is actually a table. Meron sila nitong table sa company. Um, nakadepende siya sa result ng product, I mean, result ng testing kung i-accept or i-reject ang batch or yung lot. Pero aside sa square root system, this is letter B. Again, this is letter B, government sampling. Other name for government sampling is o oh, ang square root kay hangtod sa, sa one. Okay. Military standard or we also call this MIL STD 105D or ABC STD 105D. Uh, ginawa ito ng USA, Great Britain, and Canada. Meron din silang table nito. Wala na masyadong computation. Titingnan na lang sa, sa table. Uh, meron silang table kung 100 ang sample, pila kabuo, eh, kung 100 ang population, pila dapat ang sample. So nasila yung table for this, um, in which hindi na natin siya isasali. Hindi naman talaga siya uh, pinapagawa sa board exam. Kaya murag dako kayo itong table, no? Kaya daghan kaayog pwede nga number of population. Murag lison kayo ito siya i-memorize. As long as you know, Um, the other type of sampling that they can use, the government sampling. Okay? Pero ang pinakaginagamit, the square root system. So let us take, for example, let's have an, let's have an example sa ato ang computation. Kaya problem solving. 14 drums of muriatic acid were received in the warehouse. If the shipment has the same batch number in all drums, how many drums should be sampled using the square root system? So again, um, this is more of the of a raw material. Like muriatic acid is hydrochloric acid. So 14 drums ang na-receive. Tapos, Siyempre, di ba sabi ko kanina, pag makareceive sila ng raw materials, hindi naman na agad-agad ang raw, material, raw materials ay gagamitin in the production. Kailangan muna silang itest kung nakapasa sila sa standards and specifications. Most of the time, the reference for the standards and specifications ay yung USP NF. Okay? Okay. okay lang. So we will be using the formula square root of n plus 1. So hinahanap natin yung sample size ha, yung uh, small letter n. So square root nito, our capital letter n is the population, meaning ilan yung na-receive nila. It's 14. So it's 14 plus 1. So square root of 15, n is equal to? 3.87. Okay, this is 3.87 pero remember mahirapan tayo mag-sample ng 0.87. So most of the time, mira round off ito sa nearest whole number. Okay? So this one is 4. Meaning meaning class um na receive nila 14 na drums, same ang batch number. So isang population sila, kukuha sila ng apat na drums and galing doon sa apat na drums, bubuksan nila yon and then actually kukuha, lang, kukuha sila ng sample galing doon and isa subject sa 
testing. Okay? Pag subject sa testing, depende na sa result kung i-reject or i-accept. So kung nakapasa naman sa testing, these 14 drums will be passed on to the production area para magamit na siya in the production of the pharmaceutical product kung ano man ang uh, ginagawa nila. Okay? So yan yung ginagawa. No, pa, basi mga tanong, pa, ma, paano kung yung ma-reject? Example, nag-test sila, upat ka drum. Niya, after the testing, uy, wala siya kapasa sa standards and specification. What will happen? Ano sa tingin ninyo? What, what will happen to the received uh, raw material kung hindi siya makapasa? Um, it's either... What? <laughs> it's either... Oo, kung na-reject siya, no. Pwede, pwede mag-ulit. Tama na siya, like, uh, they can do retesting. Masignalize something wrong during the process of the analysis. Kung during the retesting, biligi hapon dyan siya makapasa, they will actually return this, the product sa supplier. I-re-return nila ito sa supplier. Hindi naman talaga na i-dispose na they will be throwing the the chemicals kay lugi kay sila ani kasi they pay they pay for this they paid for this so again isa sa uli nila ito sa supplier and then ang supplier na bahala and depende na to sa ilahang ano kanang agreement kung what will happen uh, magpadala ba og another batch ang supplier ana or kung firmi na siya mahitabo, they will actually look for another supplier na maghatag og raw materials na ano of good quality. Yung mag-improve, ang process ng pag-improve sa raw materials, uh, bahala na ang supplier doon. Pero if, if hindi ito raw materials, example, in-process product ito, tapos kung after the testing okay then go on na pwede na siyang ipackage pero kung na-reject siya class either they also do retesting um and then pwede din kung na-reject talaga siya they will do the process again sa manufacturing so balikon nila og buhat ang tambal and then pangitaon nila sa dapit sila dito nagka problema na nga dili makapasa-pasa ila ha product. Okay? Pag in process. And actually, that is also true for the finished product. Pwedeng uliton ang testing or um, kung ma-reject yun siya, bisag ulit-ulit na kana um, <laughs> mag-ulit sila from the start para ma-improve nila ang ilahang product. Pero sa high na pansin ako sa mga manufacturing firms, if if example, nag-conduct sila o testing, tapos USP and F ang gigamit na standards and standard and specification, uh, tapos wala nakapasa. Minsan, nag -re retest sila with another method kasi sa experiment, naghanmantag pwedeng gamitan na method and ginacheck nila kung makapasa ba sa another method. Pero ilaha lang na siyang i-record nga lahi nga method ang gigamit. So kung makapasa na, okay. Pero kung dili po makapasa, actually some of them look for another references. Another reference, example, kung dili siya makapasa sa USP and F, usahay mo gamit sila o BP, British Pharmacopeia, or other pagyod na mga references na pwede gamiton. So kung, for example, nakapasa siya sa standards ni British Pharmacopeia, then pwede na sila actually mag-move on. Ila sa packaging para ma-finish product na siya. As long as ibutang lang nila sa ilahang ano, uh, records na dito siya nakapasa sa British Pharmacopeia. Kasi the BP is also uh, accepted and all the other pharmacopeias pwede din silang accepted. Okay? Question so far? So how about this? Kamu na sad mag-solve? If the shipment consists of two drums with one batch number, give the sample size of the following using a square root system. Because we don't have a table for the military standard. Sige daw, pila kaya na?
Let me see. Ano ba yun? Ano question mark? May na question mark. Dili, sigurado. <laughs> I told you to round off your answer to the nearest whole number. A nearest whole number ta pirmi kay lisod kayo. Especially pag kani kay drum drum mani ang gibutang din hip. Pero paano pang tablet? Lisod kayo mangita og 0.73 na tablet. So ano pag putol. <laughs> so again, i round off nato siya. Again, pag yun na pa-compute na mo ang sample size for QC, ha? For QC, you round off your final answer to, 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 the, to the nearest whole number. Okay. So, again, uh, dalawa ka drums. Dalawa ka drums ilahang na-receive. For example, this is our raw material. Pag i-compute na to siya, ang answer, ani 1.73. And plus 1. This is 2 plus 1. This is the square root of 3. So what is the square root of 3? 1.73. And then I told you to round it up to the nearest whole number. So this is 2. So if they receive class a drum or two drums of uh, raw material, both of the drums will be subjected to the assay. Wala man, wala man ko nag-ingon nga, ihurut nila ang sulod sa drum for the testing, ha? Pero both of the drums will be opened and magkuha sila o portion of that and then ipa-test. Kung, kung liquid ni siya, magkuha lang sila pila ka-volume, ane, and then isubject siya sa testing. But nevertheless, the two drums will be subjected to testing. So, muna siya ang ginamin, ha? Pero take note, i-round off nato siya sa nearest whole number. Kay lisod kay mukuha og 0.73 sa drum. <laughs> so again, i-round off. Nearest whole number. <laughs> okay, any question with the computation of the sample size? Meron silang table nito. Example, um, yung AQL na tinatawag Mahaba din kasi ang table nito class camp. Hindi din siya pinapamemorize. Naalan dyan ni sila yung copy ane sa mga manufacturing firm. Na kada mag-conduct sila og testing, tinitingnan nila yung table na yon. Ang table nakalagay doon, for example, nag-assay ka ng dalawa. Yung isa, kung, kung dalawa ang kung dalawa talaga nakapasa, diretsyo na yon accept. Pag dalawa hindi nakapasa, reject. Pag isa nakapasa, isa hindi, meron silang corresponding na nakalagay for the decision, it's either retest, retest, niya, after the retest, kailangan nakapasa na yung dalawa. So again, mahaba yung table kasi lahat ng numbers of samples nandoon. Paano kung yung sample mo 20? So kung 15 nakapasa, ang lima wala. So nadito, yung, nadito sa table ang decision na himuon kung i-accept, i-reject, or mag-retest. Okay? Next, let's talk about the material control. We have here the raw materials. Once they they receive the raw materials, uh, it will be tallied sa RTR. Nas lagi na tawag ng RTR or the receiving tally report. So this will be done by the receiving personnel. Um, I, ano, isulatan ng date of receipt, kinsay nag-deliver, time of receipt. So, tanan i-record pila kabuok, um, condition of the materials na na-receive and so on. Again, we call that RTR or Receiving Tally Report. Now, the raw materials will be placed in quarantine. <laughs> I-quarantine ato ang mga raw materials and it will bear, lalagyan siya ng sticker na nakalagay hold. Hold sticker or pwedeng colored lang na sticker. Wala na talaga yung term na hold. The color coding yan later. I will also show you the color coding. Until there will be a QC inspector na magbibigay ng decision whether to accept or to reject the raw materials after the testing or the analysis. So sa, during quarantine, uh, the raw materials again will be placed with a hold sticker, and then after the testing, either uh, tatapalan lang yung hold sticker ng decision sticker. So decision, kung nakapasa siya, so tatakpan yung hold sticker ng uh, 
uh, sticker for the acceptance and kung reject, reject din. Or pwede din kung hindi siya tatakpan, tatanggalin mo na yung hold sticker and then papalitan ng decision sticker. So take note that in the manufacturing firm, hindi dapat magsabay ang dalawang stickers na different ang disposition. Kasi uh, magkakaroon na ng error, magkakaroon na ng mix-up. So yung um, magta-transfer ng raw material will be confused kung saan papunta ang raw material, kung on hold pa ba siya or go na or reject siya na kailangan siya ibalik sa supplier. Okay? So reject pag hindi nakapasaha sa standards and specifications and approved na sticker if nakapasa. Okay? So ito yung uh, sinasabi kong stickers na ginagamit nila sa manufacturing firm to avoid mix-ups. So again, this is color-coded. And nung nagme-memorize ako nito, ang tinitingnan, ang, ang iniisip ko lang talaga is the traffic light. Kasi, except for the orange na part, yung orange man, orange man ang isa sa traffic light. But nevertheless, yellow is quarantine. And then green, green ang color ng sticker pag na-approve na siya after testing. And then red if rejected. So pareha sa traffic light, stop pag, stop pag, ay, red pag stop and then green pag go. So except for the yellow part, nasa quarantine. So, favorite board exam question po na nila class ka ng color sa sticker. Oh, basta, basta red failed. <laughs> ano man na? Okay. Questions? Hey, you want to clarify? You want to clarify something? Wala. Now, let's talk about the printed and the packaging materials. These are also board exam questions. Uh, we have two types of packaging, primary and secondary. Ang tandaan nyo lang pag primary, merong direct contact to the product. Example, ang taklob sa, sa bottle or the bottle mismo or even our capsules. The capsules are, are dosage forms pero uh, ano siya, form of packaging siya kasi the drugs are uh, placed inside it. So meron siyang direct contact to the drug. Okay? Pag again, pag may direct contact, primary packaging. If walang direct contact, we call that secondary packaging. So like the cartoons, the inserts, or even the labels, they don't really have direct contact mismo to the drug product. So secondary packaging ang tawag natin. Okay? And then, um, another thing that you need to know sa QC are the reassay dates. When you say reassay, re, re means again. So we will assay the product again. Meron itong um, schedule. Merong schedule class for the different types of pharmaceutical products when to do the reassay. Kailan natin test again for stability, for purity, or yung quality as a whole niya, kailan siya itatest kung hindi pa siya na-consume ha, kailan siya itatest ulit. So for highly unstable materials, may mga ano talaga, may mga drug products na very unstable, uh, monthly siya tinitest, meron silang batch na iniiwan for testing, and then prior to use. Depende, meron ding prior to use, nag a pa before giving it sa patient. Especially yung mga compounded na mga drugs. Hindi yung drugs na prepare na talaga ng manufacturing firm ha and pwedeng stay for long period of time. Meron talagang compounded like sa hospital, nagko-compound sila ng drug. If it is highly unstable, before giving it to the patient, they will assay it. Now for vitamins and for flavors... The reassay date, if not yet used, is six months. So after six months, it test siya ulit kung, kung okay pa ba siya, nakapasa pa ba siya sa standards and specifications. For dyes, for our coloring materials, we have 12 months. And for other excipients, mga 
Uh, ano may yung mga ba- uh, mga exigencies natin like sa like sa paggawa ng tablet, meron tayong lubricating agent, glidant, meron tayong um bulk bulk former bulking agent. So pag hindi pa siya nagamit after 24 months, kailangan niya siyang i-reassay. Okay, we call that again reassay dates. Now, before we'll end, let's talk about batch first. Batch kasi Kanina ko pa ito sinasabi. And makikita niyo ito sa label ng ating drug products. Merong batch number. Again, when you say batch, it's the specific amount of drug product that is produced in a unit time or a single manufacturing order during same cycle of manufacture. So it does not necessarily mean that isang araw, isang batch. So, depende yon sa time frame na sinet ng manufacturing firm or sa cycle nila kung ilan yung order. Isang batch yon siya. So, para malaman kung uh, anong batch yun na manufacture, nilalagyan nila yon ng batch number. But minsan, ang makikita natin sa label is the lot number. Okay? So, anong kaibahan nila? Actually, a lot can also be a batch, but it can also be a portion of a batch. So, kung masyadong marami na yung order sa isang cycle, pwede nilang hatiin into portions. Like, example, itong araw na ito, isang lot, ang sunod na araw is isang lot din, pero isang batch sila. Pero minsan, uh, hindi nyo na nakikita yung batch number. Instead, lot number na ang nilalagay. Okay? Now, we have the so-called distribution control certificate. This is also a board exam question, but nakafocus yan siya sa antibiotics. Si antibiotics class, kahit nakapasayan sa lahat ng testing inside the manufacturing company, either sa I, uh, RM, IP, and even the finished product, before sila i-release in the market, kailangan muna ng a uh, batch certificate coming from the Food and Drug Administration. Actually, yung mga distributors and yung mga uh, community pharmacy hinahanap ito from the manufacturing firm before nila tanggapin yung product. Okay? And so the, yung date sa mga labels is exactly the date po na na-complete ang product. Uh, what do you mean? Manufacturing date? Money mo ang ginamin? Yeah. Uh, pero actually, sa manufacturing date and the expiration date, atong batch, yung batch is just a number na i-assign lang na siya sa manufacturing company. So, lahi po ang manufacturing date. Pero most of the time, ang nakalagay lang sa manufacturing date is the month and the year. So, hindi talaga siya exact exact date. Again, hindi talaga exact date. And then, sa expiry, uh, expiration date po, uh, most of the time also, month and year lang yan siya. Uh, pero it means that ano, ano ibig sabihin ng expiration date? Example, nakalagay January 2022. Anong sadyad na mag-expire ang product, Ana? Bagan mag sa January 2022. Kailan kaya? Kailan siya mag-expire? Ano <laughs> question mark? <laughs> This one is a board exam question. They really ask this a board exam. Like, they will give you the, the manufacturing date and then when will the product expire. Most of our drugs, two years. Pero kung nakalagay dyan, manufacturing date, January 2020, expiration date, January 2022, kailan yun? Yung, ano, since multiple choices yung board exam, yung choices, yung exact date, kailan sa January It's it's the end of the month, the last day of the month. Kaya lang ang board exam, palisod-lisod pa jud, kay nagyud na siya sa choices ang January 30 o January 31. So, dapat kabalo mo og unsa ang last day of the month, okay? 
So, dili lang mumuingon na end of the month. So, kano sa mag-end ang month? Kailangan ko ninyo siya i-pinpoint. So, dapat kabalo mo kung 30-31 ba. Wala problema sa February 28. Labaw nag-nilip year. <laughs> nilip year 29. Pero kung 30 o 31, you really have to know. Pati ka na, ano, problema ko na to kung may 30 or 31. Or, kung 30 lang ba or 31 ang month. How do you know kung 30 or 31 ang month? Uh, I mean, 30, 31 days or 30 days ang sa kabulan. Ano sa'yo ginahin mo ninyo para makabalumuan na? May technique! <laughs> sa kamot! Okay, you can use <laughs> you can use that sa inyong kamot. Ganing, ano sa'yo ninyo hang ginahin mo? <laughs> kung kung na'y kanig, ay dilidish mo kita sa kam. Na'y bukog, for example, kanig 31. So, January, tapos kung wala diri book kung February <laughs> ano di dawag 28 or 30 so January January February March ay 31 April wala May June uh, ang magkapareho July and August pareha silang may 31 kay pagabot diri January February March April May June July and then pagdating mo dito sa kabilang kamay mo may bukog man siya so 31 31 gihapon you can use that I think murang nigawas na siya sa among board exam because I can I can remember myself na nagtanaw sa akong kamot. <laughs> nagtanaw sa akong kamot kung may 30 ba or 31 ang month. Kay again, dina-ask siya sa boards kung kailan mag-expire ang drug. So take note, most of our drugs expire after two years and at the end of the month. It has to be a specific date. Okay? Kaya ninyo na siya. Pero again, Uh, before ha, distributing the drug, the antibiotics and the insulin will be required for, uh, for a batch certification from FDA before release. Oh, pati 30 or 31, you really have to know that. Okay, so uh, it's, it's 4.31 na din. Sobra na ko. Uh, let's continue next meeting.